Good. But uh, let's just pause, have a breath for a, for a moment or two, and uh, let's listen to a little bit of music. <laughs> Taking a look at what uh, phobias are, uh, what they're not, and look at some of the the symptoms of phobias. So 
I said uh, earlier on in this episode that that um, we're not born with phobias. We, we, we learn them. So let's take a look at what causes phobias. Or to put it another way, let's ask, answer the question of why me? Why have I got this phobia? You see, generally we learn a phobia at some stage in our life. Now, it's usually around about the age of zero to seven years old. That's usually the time in which we learn most of our uh, phobias, most a lot of our stuff about how to interact with the world comes during that the age zero to seven. Um, discussion of why that particular age range is is kind of beyond the scope of this this episode. We uh, we may take a look at that in uh, in another episode at some point because that has huge implications for vast areas of our life. But for now, just um, let's realise that um, phobias are something we generally learn between the age of zero or zero to seven, although it is possible to develop phobias at other stages in, in, in life as well. Now, genetics and culture can play a role in developing phobias, but life events are the biggest direct cause of, of the development of phobias. And, you know, a phobia is actually a great example of how quickly human beings can, can and do learn. I mean, it only takes one very bad experience to create a phobia in an instant. Uh, let's give an example of how this, this might happen. Uh, just imagine uh, a very young child. Imagine you're a, you're a very young child, okay? And you're out, out for a walk with your parents, maybe in the park or whatever. And your parents are being boring like parents and grown-ups do. They're busy talking with other grown-ups. So you, being naturally inquisitive child that you are, you go off exploring in this park. You can still see your parents. It's all cool. Now, all of a sudden, this huge, terrifying monster comes bounding into view, slobbering away big, sharp, pointy teeth, making all sorts of really loud noises, slobbering away, tongue lolling around, and it comes bouncing towards you. To you, this young child, this is, who's never encountered something like this before, this is terrifying. There's a terrifying monster that's about to eat you. What do you do? Obviously, you scream, right? Because it's terrifying. Your parents hear the scream, but they're too far off to actually uh, be instantly with you there. So what do they do? They start shouting at the monster to go away and shouting at you to come here. Now, as they do that... They're starting to panic a little bit as well. And they're instilling in you the fact that this monster is very, very terrifying. And that you were right to be scared because it could eat you. Because let's face it, your parents, who are unflappable gods, they are starting to react and scream and shout. And they're trying to chase the thing away and get you to to come to them. My word, this really must be a, a truly very dangerous situation. And then when you get to your parents, they comfort you and and, and reassure you. And, ah, now, you've never met this this monstrous thing before. So what's happened here? You've learned that the way to react whenever you see that kind of monster is to panic, scream and freak out. You've learned in that instant, that is how you react when you see that monster. Those are the feelings, the fear, the terror, the this thing is going to kill me. And that gets really deeply ingrained and programmed into your brain. So the next time you meet a similar one of these monsters or see a similar one of these monsters, your brain flicks through because, oh, I know what we do. Panic. So, bam, up comes all the phobic symptoms. Because that's what you've learned. That's how you've learned how to, how to react with that thing. You've learned this is something that's dangerous and could kill you. Now, when, when you, as you grow up and maybe become a, a, a developing teen and onto a full-grown adult, you realise this monster was just, just a friendly wibble coming to play. That's all it was. It wasn't going to eat you. It was just a friendly, cuddly, fluffy wibble just wanted to play. And at the rational level, you know that wibbles are nothing to be scared of. You know that they pose no threat. However... The very core reptilian part of your brain, the the bit that deals with life and death situations, that has been programmed to know that weebles equals danger of death. And that part of the brain reacts far more quickly than your unconscious, 
which also acts far more quickly than your conscious. So the conscious rational part going, what's that? Oh, it's a wibble. Oh, it's all right. It's just cute and fluffy. By the time you've consciously realized that, the deeper parts of your, your brain and your mind that, that are um, focused on preserving your life, they've already kicked in. They've already prepped you for fight or flight. They've already alerted you to the fact that this is a real danger. This is a massive threat to you. They're pumping you full with adrenaline so you can, you can fight or run for your life. That's where you get all the uh, anxiety symptoms from a phobic attack. The heart racing the, as the adrenaline flows through you, the sweating, the shakes. Because deep, deep, deep down, part of your brain has identified this is a danger. It's learned this is a danger and it equips you to fight or run before the rest of your brain can go, oh, wait a minute, it's all right, this thing's perfectly safe. But by that time, you're already on red alert. That's how phobias develop. That's how quickly they can develop. And anyone can develop a phobia. Absolutely anyone can develop a phobia. Aha, Keith, but what about phobias which we don't learn from an event, but which might be cultural or might be inherited from from our parents or from others around us? You said not all phobias are, uh, are learned this way. But some are uh, from uh, from culture and, and 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 so on. What about those? Well, again, these are still learned responses. We don't necessarily learn from being coming face to face with a wibble, but we learn by observe as we as we uh, as we develop. We learn by observing and mimicking, especially during those uh, years, uh, age zero to seven. And for example, suppose we have a parent who's terrified of wibbles. Every time our parent encounters a wibble, they panic, they overreact. We learn from our parents and we learn that the correct way to react when we see a wibble is to panic. In other words, just as with uh, the coming face to face with that wibble in the park, we learn how to do the phobia. Just in this case, we've learned it from, we've learned it secondhand from, from someone else. We've still learned that phobia. So phobias are all learned responses. So... If we learn a phobia, does that truly mean we can conquer our phobias? In a word, yes. Absolutely, we can conquer phobias. People have been conking, con- conking, conking phobias. Hmm, that's, that's starting to sound like some schoolyard game now, isn't it? Let's play conking with phobias. <laughs> People have been conquering phobias for, for quite some time. And these days, there are very, very quick, simple and fun ways to, to, to conquer phobia. And we'll take a look at that in the third part of... Uh, third part of this episode. But before we do that, let's just kind of explore some of the older techniques which used to be used in the past to help people handle phobias. And these are very often the ones that people think of when they think about phobia cures. And these are the ones which really put people off getting their phobias cured because they think they have to go through these these things. So let's just take a, a quick look at some of these and bear in mind, freedom from phobia does not use any of these techniques. They're less effective. They're very often very scary. We do not use these techniques. But let's just take a quick look at some of them. The, probably the oldest form of phobia treatment, the one most people think of, is uh, classical conditioning or exposure treatment. And it's a really scary prospect. In fact, it's so scary that it generally puts, uh, very often puts people off seeking, seeking help with their phobias. You see, uh, classic classical uh, conditioning techniques they're based on the belief that a phobia is a reflex which we acquire and apply to non-dangerous uh, stimuli uh, so the normal fear to, to something dangerous such as a, a poisonous wibble becomes generalized into a, a more general fear, fear about all wibbles including non-poisonous ones so the theory is that if you're exposed to the non-dangerous wibble time after time after time without any ex- any harm being experienced the phobia will gradually disappear mm. so basically if you keep being exposed to the thing you're terrified of and nothing bad happens eventually you'll stop being terrified of it yeah i know right but that for a long time was considered the way to to to, to treat phobias Of course, it assumes that you're able to cope with being regularly exposed to the non-dangerous wibble. And it also assumes that you don't experience the dangerous wibble during the the time 
over which you're having these many, many, many sessions. Because it, it can take a lot of sessions, a lot of being exposed. And um, it's, it can be very, very, very terrifying.